I look, mine looks like a witch that's five years old. I'm also making myself a witch in solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to show us what you got? Yes. Today's guest is somebody that everyone knows I adore. He's been on my radio show like more times than any other guest uh, on my radio show cartoon set is 5 to 8 p.m. Plug, plug. He cooks, I think. Yes, he draws. He's, of course, a singer-songwriter and he's possibly more talented and lovely than he realizes. It's Nathan Cartono. Hey, Ginny, hey. are you okay? Okay. Oh. I can't sing too much of that song. Oh, yes, okay. it's very copyrighted. So we've caught up a few times during this pandemic. It's been like, what, two years? Um, we're into COVID-19. Um, so obviously, I mean, you, like me and everyone else as well, we, we've got the ups, the downs, the good, the yeah. bad. Yeah. Where are we finding you at right now? Um, you know, <laughs> so like... It's, when, when, when talking about mental health, which is something that um, is coming to the forefront for a lot of people, like, um, I always get a little bit wary before I open my mouth to talk about anything. Not so much because of, like, I'm worried that I might give the wrong message or anything. Okay. It's more like I'm just worried, like, what I might reinforce when I try to say it out. Like For I, yourself, is yeah, it? Yeah, like, because okay. it's very dependent on, like... like like, to be honest with you, before we had this conversation today, like, when you asked me about it, like, a few weeks ago, I was like, okay, fingers crossed, I hope I'm going to be in a, me a healthy mental state on the day of the show. Right. Because then it will be, like, slightly easier to kind of, like, look at things in perspective and, yeah. like, look at it objectively. Um, but, yeah, that's not really the case. I'm not in a great place today, but that's completely okay as well. Okay. And, like, I'm very curious, like, to, like, delve into that. Yeah. Good, great. Yeah. I know what you mean because actually it's quite tough to unpack mm -hmm. um, stuff if you maybe uh, find yourself in a darker place than other days. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard. And also I think nowadays it's just a lot easier to fall into a hole because of everything that the world is throwing at you constantly. Yeah. yeah. Whether or not you ask to see it or not. You know? Yeah. So it's very easy to just suddenly find yourself in a strange headspace and... It's. I also think it's cool that a lot of people are awakening to that, yep. like in a way that is bringing a lot of conversations forward. Maybe we will do better as a society because of all this awareness. Yeah, to like make sure that we um, decrease the amount of like you know <laughs> these holes that we find ourselves in. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I was um, looking at your Instagram. I think mm. you just posted something about some stuff that's keeping you up at night yeah can you share a little bit about that <laughs> yeah i i recently turned 30 and i think you know it's it, it, being 30 nowadays doesn't really mean much doesn't really mean you're old or young or whatever it's just it's a milestone right yes, it's like it is. a life milestone so of course you tend to be a bit more reflective during this time yeah i guess i just keep finding myself lying awake at night and thinking about like all the things that could have been or if I am where I should be. Okay. And not going to lie, there's definitely also like a little bit of like bitterness that I don't know where to place about how the pandemic has kind of taken away like a couple of really prime years in my life, mm. you know, like 28, 29, 30. Those yeah. are like really good years, especially like to do music and be in the entertainment scene and everything. Yep. Like you're at this really nice place where like experience meets talent meets like youthful energy yes. <laughs> and all those things yes. and like those things definitely kind of bother me every once in a while when i give them a bit too much power but you know i i, I put up this post because i i was just out cycling with friends one one day that looked really fun though oh, by it the way. was the best but like it was just one of those moments where i looked at where i was and i looked at the people around me yeah and i was like no this, this does not suck at all like this this is like the farthest thing from sucking. Yeah. Like, if I were to call this a bad life, then I am not being a grateful person. You right. Know? Like, yes, there are things that we could do better. Yes, there are things, you know, looking back in the past that we might have um, wished we'd done differently. But, like, when you really truly look at where you've ended up and see all the good that's around you, and for me in particular, like, I'm just really grateful for, like, who I've chosen to surround myself with. Yeah. And the, and like the beautiful places that like um, you go with these people, um, both literally and figuratively. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it was just like this overwhelming feeling of gratefulness in the midst of like a lot of swampy bitterness. It's tough to find where to place any of that. Yes. But I find it a lot easier to like just aim towards like what you need to be grateful for. Yep. And like really look at those things and 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 realize that they might not be there forever. So like just freaking hold on to it right now, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I totally agree. At least you're able to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least you're able to get yourself out of that frame of mind of thinking of the things that you're, you know, upset about or or regretful about yeah. or the missed opportunities because of the last two years yeah. and sort of change it into, okay, but literally what what do I have in my life that's great mm-hmm. right now? I yeah. mean, not everybody has the ability to do that. I think it's important and and it's good that you have managed to like sort of like when you get yourself into these moments, go like, okay, you know what? Yeah. There's many things. I think everything just comes with time and perspective, really. Yeah. Like, like not to say that there was a time where I didn't feel completely down in the dumps, but it just comes with time and perspective. When you're feeling completely down in the dumps, like yeah. is there anything, any routine that you go through, like a physical routine or like maybe you plan out a day where, okay, I'm feeling so crap right now. I need to do this in the morning, <laughs> this in the afternoon. I need to call a friend. I need yeah. to exercise. Do you have those things? I guess I guess what you're talking about is like the cycle of how I climb out of the depressive cycle. Yeah. Um, because the depressive cycle itself, it's very same-ish. I just find myself in bed watching a lot of TV. Right. And like... <laughs> escaping into other worlds because this one is just a bit like too crappy at the moment yep yep but the cycle in which i find myself climbing out of those um just dark holes is just saying yes to more things you know like being open and being willing to just be somewhere like be present with someone else be at a thing say yes to a project or whatever uh, even dinner or anything when I get into those states, I tend to hermit myself Isolate, and just pretty much yeah. like, whoop, I'm gone. So I find that just saying yes to more things, no matter how low your self-esteem is feeling, no matter how caught up in your own nonsense you're feeling and like, oh, the world's never going to understand. Just say yes and go to a thing and like just be with people and realize that there are other lives going on around you and maybe what you're going through is not that bad. Yeah. Um, and then also, of course, music. Um, that's been something that's been so infinitely like reassuring for me over the last two years because you know during phase one the first bits of the pandemic we weren't really able to even play a lot of music uh, with with our friends yeah um but once those things eased up uh started just jamming with friends and strangers um at a Mm. studio and it just made it was like the bright spot in every week, you know, to just like sketch with people and yeah. just express yourself. And I say it was reassuring because it really made me realize that, yeah, this is truly like what I'm, he- I-, I think this is what I'm here for. Yeah. Or like it's a very big part of what I'm here for, to connect with people through this music because I have the ability to to, to create it. Like, okay, like when the when the whole COVID thing started. Yes. Because of that loss of performances and loss of just jobs in general, I, I because so much of my identity is ingrained in music, I also had a loss of identity. Mm. And over the course of just having these jam sessions with friends over the pandemic, I regained that identity back again okay. through these connections. So, I mean, the craft of music, I think, is very helpful, especially in a time like this mm-hmm. where, you know, you can rely on that. Yeah. Do you ever find, though, that... Um, the opposite can happen sometimes. Like, because music is, Mm -hmm. you're writing stuff and you're, you know, you're caught up, you're isolated, you're writing music. Does it ever sort of go the other way when you're like, oh, I can't get out of this zone? It's not a job, I don't think. It's just never been a job for me. Like, it's it's a reflection of my life. And uh, because of that, it can bring about the most beautiful things and it can also bring about complete hell. Yeah. Like, I, I always say that music is my best friend and my worst enemy. Right. Um, it's brought me all, it's brought me the highest of joys that I've had in my life and it's also brought me the lowest of lows that I've had in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, the current, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not super down in the dumps right now, but I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, 
plateauing down a very like <laughs> slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, no. down, down like a very oh. gradual slope, I guess. Um, and it's because of music. Like I'm currently in a creative phase for like the next bunch of releases, and I'm just hitting wall after wall after wall, and that bums me out. Yeah, but you know, it's part of the process. Yeah. Like I'm trying to just like. <sighs> take it all in and just accept that you know nothing is coming out right now but don't give up just keep going um but it sucks the ideal situation is that it just kind of flows yeah. and you don't have to think but about it doesn't it. really happen all the time nope. no right sometimes you have to nope. constructively mm -hmm. get into it yeah sometimes you're not inspired as much yeah. so you have to like yeah work at it yeah okay. But I also think that it's it's gonna be a cool journey like I think this is like the struggle part, you know, because yeah. it's it's not supposed to be easy. No, for but sure. But I'll be happy. Like, ask me again in six months, and I'll be so grateful that it sucked so much. <laughs> you know, because yeah, I, I would have yeah. been out already, right? Yeah, and I would have come out of it like a, a little bit stronger, or just a yeah. little bit more informed about like my creative process. Yeah, yeah. Um, in your thirty years of life, mm -hmm. and thirty is super young. Yeah. Um, what's been like the biggest struggle like, apart from pandemic and all that? What do you think has been the biggest struggle that you've had to overcome or are still overcoming? Self-esteem issues, probably. Like, and, and, and all these kind of issues, they rarely make sense to other people. It's very much like an internal war. Yeah. Like they always say, you can't judge somebody's um, outside with your inside. Like every everything is different. Um, everyone's insights are different. Mm -hmm. And for me, like my low self-esteem stemmed from like um, a whole bunch of things like being like a fat kid and being like uh, occasionally bullied. And then after that, becoming a very minor celebrity while I was in secondary school and getting shit for that as well. <laughs> Um, that's tough man yeah that's and not, then not and then there's also like the whole imposter syndrome that comes up when you're just starting out um so like a lot of just foundation and also because i was in the public eye in such a young age yeah just a lot of foundational things that set up you know like yeah. that set you up for low self-esteem in your adulthood <laughs> um okay and I'm glad that it's something I'm aware of, yeah. but it's not always something that I can program myself out of. Okay. Yeah. Like I like how it shows up is um, sometimes I look in the mirror and I don't see what other people see. There's a bit of like dysmorphia, I guess. Or sometimes like um, I do a, a I perform a, at a thing or release a song and like I just have a very skewed perspective of what it is because of how i view myself yeah and i you know everyone always says that you are your worst critic but like i don't know with 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 the, with the kind of low self-esteem that i've always had it doesn't really feel like i'm just criticizing i feel like i'm actively hating myself right. and that's like not great of course yeah um but yeah, like I, I've definitely made like a lot of strides with it just from accepting it mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. from being like, you know, this is just a part of you. You don't have to like, like it's, you can't just like, you know, delete it forever. Yeah. There's always going to be remnants of it somewhere. Yeah. So just kind of like, um, accept it, realize the things that you do bring to the world, the things that will not go away with time or the mm -hmm. things that um, people cannot take away from you. And yeah. I mean, outside looking in, nobody would have any guesses that you would have esteem issues, Nathan. I mean, for yeah. real. But, you know but it, I mean? doesn't, it never makes sense for anybody. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, for example, if I told somebody that I have body dysmorphia, that makes no sense to anybody because like, I, like I've been quite like scrawny-ish for like a while now slash fit fit You've yeah sometimes occasionally fit <laughs> occasionally scrawny occasionally all over the place but like um <laughs> you know i've definitely not been like overweight since i was uh uh 13 right okay but like it left such a weird scar yeah that like that you know the the, the, the i don't know how to even no describe i get it, it. because yeah. i you know i think um yeah like, when I was in school, too, I was really, like, an awkward teenager. I was mm -hmm. an awkward teenager, yeah. late teen, yeah. for, a long, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, I get that because I'm still that kid yeah. inside. You know, I still identify with that kid. So, I yeah. still see that person in the mirror. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a touch of nerve, I think, for, for the both of us. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. 
Um, so cooking seems to be your thing. You're yeah. like a like a little master chef of your own. Um, mm. Does it <laughs> is it is it something that uh, really like helps you with, it with just dealing with everything? Joy. Yeah, it brings me a lot of joy because um, it's like. You know, it's it's a little bit like like jazz. It's a little bit like sketching. You're just kind of messing about. Yeah. Um. Like I I don't think I've cooked with a recipe for like a, many years now. Um. Just because it's so much fun to just figure it out. Yeah. And just adjust and adapt. Um. But mostly, it just brings me a lot of joy because it's a good excuse to bring people together, mm-hmm. and like to be able to um create the medium that brings people together. Yeah. That's nice. Well, it must have been hard with, uh, I mean, particularly with the two people thing for a bit. For a little bit. But like, so in the beginning of the pandemic, I was really grateful to have been living with a bunch of apartment mates. Mm. So I was living with uh, four other people. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. And um, it was nice in the sense that like, uh, you know, we didn't have to be social all the time. We can just yeah. like stay in our rooms. But occasionally we'd always have like, you know, every, every few days in the week, we would have like a little... Yeah. Apartment dinner where everyone cooks. Yeah. And yeah, it's just That's a nice, nice. It's, just, it's like a nice way to get people together. And um, I grew up in like a food family because like my uncle and my mom are in the restaurant industry. So I kind of grew up kind of growing up around t- like dinner tables, you know, mm. and understanding the importance of that. Um, so yeah, nice. like it, it's it's just something that brings me a lot of joy. I don't know if it's something I would ever pursue as like a career, right? Because it, it might take the fun out of it once you do maybe, that. Maybe, but it also might make it a lot more fun because like you are essentially spreading that joy to a lot more people. Mm. So, but I know that FMB is like hell, and it's it's, it's hard. A, yeah. You would know. I mean, yeah. like you know, it's it's a rough go, and I know if I ever want to venture into it, that also means like you know, putting a really big pause on the music. Yeah, yeah. for quite a while, mm-hmm. and. As you would know, um, whenever you're like in a overwhelmed space or you're diving into like a going down a rabbit hole or something, it's always good to do something that you normally wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be, yeah, as you know, break the just, rhythm. Yeah, break the rhythm and get your give your brain a little mini vacation. I like to say. So I thought what we could do is um, draw ourselves. Yes whichever way you interpret yourself to be. Uh-huh. And then, um, you know, write down like however many things um, that you love and appreciate about yourself. Okay. That sounds challenging, but in a, in a good way. I did not do art class. I'm, I'm just trying to like write the first good thing that I'm, I'm, tr- I'm not like thinking a bit of, I'm not thinking of it of like, oh, I need to name all the things. Yeah, that, I'm just, just yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to like, First good thing I think about, whatever. Like, the first positive affirmation, whether it's true or not, I'm just putting it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I need exercise and loving and appreciating myself a bit more. Yeah, like, fill it up with some physical things. I'm I'm doing both physical and, like, non-physical, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and again, they don't even have to be, like, super true. Like, I'm just going with, like, it's... it's, (laughs) I am that sometimes, and that's good enough. Look, mine looks like a witch that's five years old. I'm also making myself a witch in solidarity. (laughs) Okay, you want to show us what you got? Yes, that's me as a witch. That is adorable. Because I figured that's what we're doing today. <laughs> um, do you want me to just go through it? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the physical things. I have good eyebrows. You sure do. This I know because I've never I've never done anything to them and they seem to hold up. I have good skin. You do. Yes. Like, the only thing I... Like, I have, like, a weird thing under my eye right now that I need to fix, but that's a, the dermatologist's problem. But other than that, I know I have, like, decent enough skin. You I sure don't... Do. I barely do anything with it, and it seems to work out. And that's just genetics. I'm thankful for it. That's I, awesome. I did nothing to deserve it. <laughs> I do nothing to improve it. Um, it's just a blessing, and I'm thankful for it. I like to make people smile. On my down days, I some I sometimes look at that same trait as like, oh, you're a people pleaser. But no, on the other hand, it's like, no, you like to make people smile. You like to make people happy. And I think I, I'm occasionally good at it. And I'm I'm grateful for that. Um, an open heart to the world. I think I'm a very open-minded person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I keep an open heart for anyone and everybody. And it has brought me nothing but good things in life. So I'm grateful for that as well. Under the hat, there is mm-hmm. a good brain. A not good so, brain. Yes, good art brain. Not so much for math and science, but good art brain. That's yeah. cute. It's shocking how bad I am with like anything involving numbers. 
Like no, I understand that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that is. That's really nice. That is、uh, me as a witch. That is cute. Being happy with love it myself. Really, really lovely. That could be auctioned off or something. <laughs> Um, oh, here's mine.、Um, here's my witch. <laughs> As you can tell, she's five.、Um, reg- I've regressed to five、um, with stick for legs. Well, the physical things that I I love about me is that I'm I'm very tanned. I did not love that for many years、uh-huh. um, because I guess I grew up in an environment where you know being tanned was <sighs> frowned upon. Yeah, no, yeah. they literally like. Push advertising for like whitening、yeah. cream, like it's a thing that you need to achieve. Yeah, so it's it's hot. Yeah, as a kid, you know, it's really hard to deal with.、Mm-hmm. So I didn't embrace that till、uh, much, much later, to、yeah. be honest. And it was, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, when talking about it now, it's actually quite difficult to talk about. But you know, it was it was a difficult thing. But now I I embrace it and I love it. And if Somebody says something not so nice about it.、Um, I don't feel so bad about it.、Uh, the other thing I think、uh, that I do have a lot of is、um, sometimes I, I I don't think it's a good thing. It's being empathetic to things. I'm just I feel a lot for whatever I read, see, oh my god,、yeah. talk to or whatever,、yeah. and it takes me forever to.、Yeah. Um, let it go.、Yeah. Let it out of my system. It's,、mm. it's a great thing to have in certain situations, but it's extremely exhausting、um, to have it in others.、Yeah. I think you're possibly a, a bit like that yeah. too. Yeah, I've, I've had this conversation、uh, a bunch recently of just how、um, I, I think it, it, it's it's just true for most artistic types. I'm guessing you're not very scientifically inclined、um, either. Zero. Yeah, <laughs> like for for most artistic types, we're we're just more geared towards empathy, and while And not hating on this at all, but while someone、yeah. else can see a tragic news story and just kind of like read it, take in the information, and then maybe the next thing they do is just like you know share it to a group chat or something,、yeah. and then it just kind of leaves their day. For people like us, I think it really stays with us.、Yeah. It 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 like kind of dig a hole into our soul, and we feel like we need to do something, even though there is no real viable thing that we can do sometimes. Yeah, and that weight. Can get heavier and heavier and、yeah. heavier because, like, the input nowadays is just so constant, and it starts to really make the world around you seem very dark. Because I, I feel like we're just these sponges that、mm-hmm. absorb all of it,、mm-hmm. and it starts to affect our worldview. It starts to affect like our understanding of people. What's helped me a lot is I just unfollowed all of those news、yeah. accounts. Like, not because I I want to be ignorant, because ignorance is bliss. Although that's true to a certain extent,、yeah. it's more that like I wanted to be able to control this intake of information. Yes, and the algorithms weren't helping me. Yeah. So whenever I do want to get informed, I'll set some time and like just inform myself, as opposed to it just constantly being like, "Hey, surprise!、Yeah. Hey, surprise! The world's falling apart. Hey, <laughs> everything's going to shit." Ah, it's like I I think especially because of 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 like our increased level of empathy, like that weight just keeps. Stacking and stacking and stacking and like that helplessness. Like I remember、um, earlier this year, especially when there was that whole Israeli-Palestine conflict. Like that weighed on me in such an abstract way. Because what the hell can I do? Not to say I can't do anything, but what can like truly, realistically, what can I do to affect any kind of significant change? The more of these things that you intake, the more you kind of start viewing the world through like. Poop tinted glasses, you know, and it's very difficult to try to change the world when all you want to do is leave it. Yeah, it's very, it's 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 like a weird feeling. Yeah. yeah, it's a little heavy, but it's also like one of those things where like I feel like the more time you spend on it, like the more work you do, be it with a professional or with a friend or just yourself, like it's moving the needle somewhat.、Yeah. I think ignoring it and repressing it—that's when things start to fester. That's、yeah. when things start to like. That's when you start to actively live in denial of like what is true in your、yes. heart and soul. Yes. Um, and you know it sucks to say, but it, you see a lot of people kind of living their lives that way. Yeah. Um, and part of me is a little bit jealous because it's like, huh, must be nice to not. Like be at this constant odds with yourself and the world and the people around you,、um, and still kind of have this.、Hey. Um, but at the same time, I'm also grateful because I feel like I'm learning so much, and I feel like 
because of the last two years, it's like the catalyst to push everyone a little bit further in that journey as well. Yeah. It's I think it's just going to make for a much kinder future. Yeah, you know? for sure. People always think of the future as dystopian and like ooh, technology mm. and drones are going to be killing us or something i don't know like i don't know I, I i have hope for like a more empathetic future and like one that is you know we already see it yeah like cancel culture whether you love it or hate it if you, when you boil it down it's essentially just people caring about the feelings of people that no one used to care about yeah you know yeah and like that's 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 a hopeful future i think yeah yeah and the fact that we're having conversations like this, um, I think it's really awesome that we, ha we have this platform yeah. to do this. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Thanks it's been so such a pleasure. Always. Oh my gosh. Thank you, guys. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of the Are You OK podcast. And if you like what you see and you want to watch more, you can subscribe to us. Hope this helped your brain a little bit today. And till the next one, I'm Jean Zanker. Bye. Right. So what I'm saying is, first, there is death before there is life. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a... Okay. You have to understand the concept of death. It is right there. It is always just there. And when you understand that, it's not a very dark... It's not dark, what I'm saying. It's actually very empowering. It's actually very... Um, it feels light. Because then you realise that you actually have to deal with it now. You are dealing with death right now because you want to take care of your loved ones. You want to treasure them now you don't want to live with any regrets you don't want to have regrets you know things are happening uh, going to happen so don't wait till after death because when after death we don't even know what death is and after that what happens you know yep.